Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm David King. I'm Fred Solbreth. Welcome to Keeping It Real. Well, Fred, we've gotten old over the years. Yeah, we have. And just like every everybody out there, you know, but we all have a past, and most importantly, we all have a childhood. Yes, we do. And that, and that's the topic we're going to touch on today is childhood. Now, you know, when you're talking about childhood, you're talking about growing up. Yeah. I mean, a lot could be said. You could talk about the changes that you go through, the people that you meet and don't talk to and, and dislike and like and, and family and family that's future family members, past unfortunate family members that are no longer with us. Yeah. You know, but when you talk about childhood, what is your take on it? Basically, what you did as a child, who you hang out with, what, you know, going to school and things you did during the day and TV shows you used to watch and oh I mean well, for me I mean for me I think when I think of childhood I think about how life to me felt more easier and I think yeah. everybody watching at home uh, you know could relate to that because as a as a childhood there is no greater feeling than being a, than being a kid I remember yeah. uh, I remember growing up and Power Rangers was like the thing you know and that was my biggest concern, was I going to miss the power? <laughs> 1993, folks. Uh, I'm surprised you remember the year. See, I'm getting old. See, the yeah. year's going. <laughs> but That's we met in 92, man. Uh, but, you know, besides that, do you feel anything has changed in your life? I mean, besides you getting older, do you feel anything has changed since then and now? I think responsibility. As you grow up, you get more responsibilities for yourself. And I mean, you? for me, I mean, I, I love my childhood, but... It always, but also reflects on stuff that I'm glad I'm getting older about that I did as a childhood, you know, and that a lot of you, like a lot of viewers that were young, they used to do, I did a lot of things I shouldn't have done. Get in trouble, hanging out yeah. with the wrong crowd, and, right. and of course I thought it was cool, and it was, or it was funny, <laughs> and, you know, and we said it before, a lot of, you know, when it comes to people bullying other people, hey, I used to laugh, you know, if somebody got tripped, they'd be like, oh, that was hilarious, you know. Now you're older, like, that's not even cool. <laughs> <laughs> because you have that mindset. It's all about uh, your mindset. Well, I think it goes back to what you just said about, you know, being mature. And as you get older, you do mature. But there's some things you never grow out of. Like, well, you never, you know, you never grow out of watching, liking your favorite shows. Or you know what it was like in the neighborhood on the block. And the music you used to listen to, yeah. you know, growing up. I know for me, yeah. in my neighborhood, you know. Listening to Biggie Smalls and and, and Tupac and, and all yeah. that kind of and having the block parties and and everybody jumping up and down screaming naughty by nature was like the coolest thing ever, you know. And sometimes I'm like, I wish I could go back to being a kid where my only worry was yeah. going to school going and the to teacher school. was going to yell today or give us an assignment that I don't want to do like history. Going to school, <laughs> come home, do homework, and at 7:30, Grog Rats would be on in like a lodium. Oh man, I, I was the opposite. I used to go to school. I was I was probably like some of the kids out here. I I probably came home, and and the books went to the side. <laughs> and, and I I just you know, because as a kid, your hardest day is school. Yeah. But at the same time, your easiest well, day is school. Well, yeah, but when you're you know when you're young, you don't think about that. But when you get our age and older than us. You you like what I wouldn't give to go back to just having that life. Yeah. You know, but now it's like I think it's changed. Kids don't want to be a child anymore. They want to mm -hmm. be adults. Because they see I what mean, the adults do, and they want to. They're influenced by it. Well, I think more than that. I I think society. Of course, everybody knows society has changed. But I mean, the, even the concept like kids feel now it's cooler to be grown than it is to be uh, a kid. You know. Yeah. I, I I love being a kid because you only get to be a kid once, you know. And I, I can't tell a kid enough of that. I tell him every time I see a kid, you know, enjoy being a kid. Enjoy being a teenager because it doesn't come twice. It doesn't come three times. It comes once, you know. There's times, there's things I wish that I would have did when I was back then. Okay. I wish I would have did that I should have did now. And I would have probably been, who knows what I would have been. I would have been rich or mm -hmm. I don't know seeing the world and, mm -hmm. and everything you know but uh, for me I'm just I, I love my childhood because like you said for example go back to your cartoon thing <laughs> you're right when growing up TV was different 
most, oh, yeah. you know, you know, folks, if you don't know, me and my friend Fred here, we grew up in the 90s. And, and around that time... Cartoons of, were the thing, Well, cartoons folks. was the thing, but every show and everything you watched had a message to send to younger viewers. Yeah. Which, if you look at TV and you look at today's society, every show almost has a message of grow up. Grow up and drink. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say grow up and drink, but yeah, you're right. But well, yeah. Well, you're right because, I mean, you know, I say, I've said it before on the show, uh, young kids are influenced by what they see on television. Yeah. And most of what's on television is just that. It's about drinking. <laughs> it's drinking, about getting drugs, high and and whatever it's, else they want to put on it. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun and, and you know, yes, those things will come in time if that's what you choose to do as you grow up, but you have more kids. Okay, for example, when we were growing up, dropping out was not a thing. No. You know, it was, you know, your biggest threat was girls having babies in high school. Yeah. You know, but they at least would finish school. Yeah. Now, yeah. the majority of young kids won't even bother going to school. No. You know, no. and... Which that, back in our time, it was, you go to school, you graduate, you do what you need to do. Well, you, you did what you had to do even if you didn't want to because you understood that I'm going to need it in life. Right. Now, I think TV and the generation up to date, they got that concept where it's supposed to just happen and it's supposed to come to me. Yeah. Like, I'm not supposed to work for it. I don't have to work hard at to get good, uh, to get good at something. I can just sit here and it will eventually come. No. Wrong. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, that, that's how you would say that's my take on it. Yeah. You know, do I miss being a kid every day? Because not only was life easy, but, you know, you know, I... I used to be able to walk for one. I wasn't in a wheelchair. For me, yeah. that was a big highlight of growing Folks, up. Folks, I met this kid when he was walking. Which, if any, if I could just see you walk again, man, no offense to your chair, but if I could see you walk again, that'd be the highlight for my life. Well, thank you. I mean, I mean, when I met you, you had blonde hair. Well, light and brown, you folks. Like, you looked like Macaulay Culkin, and now you look like Jim Carrey. But my father said that to him the first time he I met it, I met David up to date, and my dad was like, "Yep." <laughs> you know, I mean, to me, a lot of things don't seem fun no more. Like to me, a lot of shows are not as good. I mean, maybe because I'm not young, but like cartoons, like I was going back and saying, like, there's not a lot of cartoons anymore. No, that was a good cartoon. Now there's all reality shows. Oh yeah. And, and all this other stuff. Folks, we grew up in an era where it was more, there was more cartoons and game shows, if you will, than reality shows. Because you had Doug, you had Hey Arnold, you had Rugrats, you had Rocket Power, you had a bunch of other cartoons I can't remember. Now you have our iCarly and Sam and Cat and... Sam and who? <laughs> Sam, Sam and Cat. Cat. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you have a bunch of shows that all it is is reality now. It's like a sitcom. I mean, it's the newest thing for Nickelodeon. I mean, for me, the only reason I bring that into the light because it's like they always say a kid should stay at a kid's place. A kid should enjoy being a kid and all that other stuff. But how did it, you know? But at the same time, you're kind of kind of like false advertising because you're. You're saying that, but you're encouraging the kids to watch these reality shows and all this other stuff. So you're kind of helping them to grow up like, okay, you know, don't enjoy being a kid. Let's start worrying about, you know, being an adult, you know, worrying about, let's worry about getting that, that boyfriend instead of worrying about going to school. Let's worry about. I mean, at the age of six, we were running around. Oh, Watching cartoons, playing lasting, with Power Rangers in school, and I playing mean, Sonic, and the last thing on our mind back then was relationship. Now you have kids younger than, way younger than us, worrying about that boy doesn't like me, that girl doesn't yeah. want to talk to me. I mean, you know that that that's kind of crazy, personally, to me. And then you got nine-year-olds doing drugs. Oh, pff, that's a whole nother topic. You know, but but I mean, being a kid is just. It's just, it's wonderful because it's like, you're happy. Everything makes you happy. Just being with your parents makes you happy. Yeah. I I mean, I personally, if I could turn back the hands of time, I would. Not to mention what I would do in school. You know, those in school when we were young, 
got suspended five times and all that other stuff. And I, I realize how stupid I look doing that now. Because think about it, you get suspended. And yeah, you're sitting home and yeah, I'm having fun. But then later on in life, you're like, I never learned how to do that. And you know why? Because you were suspended <laughs> when you started, mm -hmm. when you should have been learning that, you know. But hey, you know, hey, I would rather as a kid that wasn't cool, you know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what, what are your, okay, you know, Fred, you know what I want to ask you? What is your take on the kids today compared to, let, let's do that. Let's go, let's go 1990s. Yeah. Actually, no, wait, scratch that. Let's go, let's go 1980s, 1990s, and up to date. And let's let's see the comparison. Let's see. I mean, nineteen eighties. I I really can't speak for that. Like other than eighty seven, other than the year okay. that I was born, eighty seven. So from as far as we know, in the eighties. Right. So, uh, my take between the eighties and nineties, I I saw the fact that everything was more of a how you say kind of a structure thing. People were into the the rock star and yeah. kind of crazy thing. And the nineties came. It was it was. You know, it was more of a party. It was more of a have. It was more of a house party era, folk. Oh yeah, you had block parties to. to it was for, like for the era, It was like the era of the nightclub. Like oh just, yeah, you know. The, Except the nightclub was your house. Oh, the nightclub was just everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, but that. You, you know, know but. And then when you compare it today and in, in, in this millennium, everybody's and, going to a club. Well, no, it's not that. Everybody is just not caring about anything no more. Nobody has structure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like. I don't have to go to school if I don't want to go to school. Not to, well, I know we've talked about this time and time and yeah. time again, but the respect factor <laughs> with families in general. Well, I mean, I know growing, I know in the 80s, you know, coming out of the 70s, as far as I know, come yeah. in the 80s, the respect for your parents and, and your was elders higher were higher up. When I was growing up, it was still there to a degree, and now it's like totally gone. But it's, but it's, folks, it's only, it's there, but it depends on how you were raised or how you're raised by that your is, parents. That is very, that is very true. Because you and I could act like gentlemen, but you could have the kid down the street act like a total idiot. Sorry, folks, technical di difficulties. Yes, technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, am I on? All right, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, folks, but, uh, but yeah, it's like. Every, you know the landscape definitely has changed. I mean, even I mean even the dress code. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was growing up. It didn't matter what color you wore. It, you know, you had the weirdest hairstyles. You had it up to the ceiling. Oh yeah, and the clothing was totally different, folks. Because you like you had you had clothing that showed some skin, but not a lot. But now it's like, if you show all of it, they they're not gonna care. No one's gonna care. <laughs> If you right or wrong? That, if you even call that clothing, <laughs> <laughs> skip me. I, I mean, let's be honest. Do you call? I mean, do you really call leggings clothing? I call them tights. Yeah, true. I mean, to me, they look like a pair of WWE wrestlers tights. Like you know, <laughs> I mean, if you just threw on some knee pads with it, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> I'm ready for a match. <laughs> you would be. I guess, but for girls today, that's considered clothing. And here's the other thing. Uggs today were not the thing back then. Uggs, I mean, I used to look at them like Eskimo boots. But <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with Eskimo boots. but I mean, everything is just, it just changes. And when, as you get older, you, you slowly see that. Like, as I was growing up, I was seeing how my friends changed. I was seeing how I was tight with this person. But then as I got older, their personality changes. I changed. You know, like I said, from being silly to being more mature to not caring about wanting to work or being independent mm -hmm. to now wanting to be independent right. and, and wanting to well, work. Well, that happens after you get out of school because even when you met one of my friends back when we first met up, you know, I told you that one of the, the kid that I was talking about didn't talk to me in high school, picked on me a little bit, but after high school, he just changed because the biggest thing after high school is, one, you either get married Two, you either get pregnant and have a kid, or three, you get your own place. Well, yeah. But I mean, life happens. Well, I mean, that's what I'll doubt, but I mean, 
when you when you're talking about when you talk about being a kid, I remember going out to recess, you know. Oh yeah. I think the only thing, the only negative part, I guess, for me and maybe some other kids, you know, and of course you can relate with that, is getting teased on, and of mm-hmm. course, you know, having a disability, kids are not really accepted to it. Which I will say, as I got older now, that's a lot better, and more people are accepted to it. But I mean, to get, I was very, I was definitely less stressed. Yeah. The biggest stress, folks, was what that kid that picked on you thought of you. And you know, so funny. That was the biggest stress yeah, level. It's that in a test. You know, it's it's funny that you mentioned that the kid picks on you because a kid that may bully you or whatever when you're a kid will be the same kid that comes to you later in the future and be like, "Hey, how you been?" Yeah. And you guys totally despise each other. Right. 14, 15, whatever the years was ago. Right. And then you guys can end up being friends in the future. I mean, that it's crazy how from your childhood to now everything changes. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you don't realize it as you're going through. You don't realize it as a kid that in, for example, I want to say just six years. Let's go with six years. Mm-hmm. How the landscape changes. You're saying from kindergarten to, to middle school. Then you're saying another... I want to say six years from middle school to high school, how the landscape changes again. And then within four years to the end, the landscape changes again. Yeah. You know, all the while, you're, all this is part of your childhood. You're going to meet friends that come in your life. You're going to meet friends that leave your life. You're going to lose loved ones. You're going to gain new loved ones. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean growing up, I lost uh, uh, two, two uh, great-grandmothers. I, um, you know, but I, I've gained, what, a brother-in-law, uh, I've lost friends, I have made new friends, I've got in touch with friends that I didn't see since I was a kid, some were doing good and some were doing bad, uh, but, you know, it, it's it's a giant roller coaster ride, mm-hmm. and, but that's, and as crazy as it sounds, that's what's great about being a kid. Yeah, it's just the beginning of it. Ex- ex- that's the thank whole you. gimmick. That, that is that is when a you're a kid. Right that's there. when your roller coaster starts. When you hit our age, you're about midway through. You know, I, I was a kid that I got teased. I, I, you know, I got told in middle school. I remember, oh, you'll you'll never get a date. And then I went off to high school, and, a and I had a date for two and a half years. Yep. I mean, so that that tells you right there. I mean, I remember when we were a kid. You know, you swear I'm in love with that person. Yeah. I remember back in transitional school, back when we met up, you had a crush on one girl. I don't even remember. That you were passing a note to her at lunch. Oh. Now you're like, let's just hit a text message. <laughs> right? When people actually wrote, folks, we wrote down messages I, on paper, know, not send it through a text. Oh, man, technology. <laughs> like you just said, when we were kids... And a lot of other viewers that are older was kids. There was no cellular phones no. and texting. Everything was pen, paper, and a little little black address book, and that's what you would write your numbers on. Folks, I'll be honest with you right now. I'll keep it real with you. I did not have a cell phone till college. Oh, you don't. Neither did I. I didn't have. Well, I had a cell phone. You had a cell college. phone in high school. Yes, I did. I didn't have one in middle school. Now you got kids having cell phones in, in elementary school. Nope. Now they got it in elementary school. Yeah, but only that. Be like, well. I get married and I have kids, folks. My daughter says to me, Daddy, can I get a cell phone? Um, no. You pass all of high school, then you'll get a cell phone. Do you feel like kids should have, how you say, grown-up stuff at a young age? At 13? Well, no, I'm not saying to 13. I'm saying, like, a young age. I'm saying, like, 11, 10, 11, 12. And, you know, should they be caring? Do you feel... I personally feel they should not be carrying cell phones and, and, and all that stuff. What, do you, what is your take on that? Because of what happens in recent years and all the school things that have happened, I think kids should have a cell phone, but only for emergency use. If you have to contact me, but use the what? cell phone. Okay. If not... You're not getting it. Okay, but my debate on that was, don't you have the school nurse for that? And then and the school principal and everything? Right. 
I mean, but I'm uh, saying like if my child went over to a friend's house, right, and spent the night over there, if they could use their phone, that's fine. But if it was an emergency or something happened, I would give that to them for the weekend, but they'd give it back to me after that. You know, and that's what I'm saying. You know, going back to when we were growing up, you know, you didn't just hang out with anybody because you had to know. No. You had to know their parents. You know, your parents had to know my parents. Oh, yeah. You know, where he's going to be and and what time they're going to get picked up and, and, you know, to call your parents. And, And, folks, you had a curfew. See, now you don't even got a curfew, you right or wrong. Well, thanks for screaming in my ear, but thank you, you're right. Sorry. But I mean, you, we have a curfew, but we don't have a curfew. It's there, <laughs> but it's not there. I mean, you got kids walking the streets at 2 in the morning, I mean, yeah. when they should be in bed, you know. I mean, I, I, just, I totally don't understand that for, for anything Sorry, in the world. Yelling here, but... No, it happens, you know. I plan to go deaf anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to deaf. It's a new hobby. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I think, you know, I think, I think the only thing that became good is that regular kids and disabled kids have learned to come together and accept one oh, another. Because yeah. I know when me and you were growing up, it was, it was we got well, teased I, like I mean, you would tomorrow. At least well, I not just teased. Other kids didn't accept us because they didn't understand us. No. But, like, one time... And I feel a lot of that was because the schools made us feel different. They didn't make us feel like no, because we you were in, fit in. They you made were, us feel different. Because I, were, I, I watched a documentary or something on this about us, and they said that they were trying to put the special needs kids, call it what it is, in with the regular kids, but they called it something. What the heck was it? Segregation or something? No, it wasn't segregation. It was... Inclusive? Something. Well, I mean... Like, they included the kid, the special needs kids in the regular classes. Well, well, yeah, because, I mean... And that happened in, like, 1980 or something? Well, yeah, but I'm saying, even when we were growing up, kids didn't really accept it because the way schools presented us was, you know, oh, you know, don't bother them, you know, they're... They're yeah. different, you know. They gave us that different vibe. Yeah. You know, now when you go into school, you know, a teacher will look at somebody that's probably sitting in a wheelchair by themselves. Have a regular kid who, you know, when they're disability at all, go walk from, hey, you know, you're going to do a project with him, you know. Yeah. You're going to do a project with her. So basically your goal is not to worry about the disability, it's to do the project. But while you're doing that project, you're you're bonding because you're yeah. gonna, you're talking and so you're looking past the blind kid. You're looking past the wheelchair kid, and you're starting to look at them for what they are, which is just the kid itself. I mean, with in what I've realized is when the people when you grow up in a family that has a disabled kid, I've had cousins, and they go to their friends and they see another kid that's disabled or mentally challenged, they look back to the sibling with the disability, which they understand it, which, give them, which gives them the view that, that most people, most families don't have. Because my cousins, when they were smaller, they used to hang out with this guy, and I guess he was special needs at the point, and the, he, they had friends and they used to make fun of him or something. And um, both my cousins come to me and they go like, Freddie, uh, they're going to, we got to make, be friends with this kid. And I'm like, well, that's because you have the viewpoint of having a person who's disabled, having, having a sibling who's disabled. So you know what that's like. Well, yeah, I mean, it does, it does help when you've been around a <laughs> you've been around a person with a disability as you've grown up, it makes it easier to understand it and to relate to it. Um, you know, we all know we're, we are a little different, and we know that. We know that off the oh, bat. Yeah. We know if you jump the fence, we're not jumping the fence. No. <laughs> you know? And if we are, it's going to take us a while to jump the fence. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, we want, we want to fit in like you. We, wanna, we don't want to sit over here in the corner. We want to sit with you 
you know, we feel things, we go through things just like everybody else. And I mean, and for me, I know since my childhood, and I know there, you know, there's some kids out there who are younger than me who are in, who have a disability, or and even kids that don't have a disability, that may say, hey, I I know a kid in my school or, or in my class who has a disability. You know, don't think that they don't have nothing in common because they're a little different because they may have a lot in common with you. Yeah. You know, hey, we feel hurt too. We feel loved too. You know, and we get mad too, and we got good days and bad days too. We're no we're no different. So you know. But I think it, it all starts, a lot of it starts when you're young because if you look at a person when they're young and, and they've been around certain things, when they, get, when they become a more of an adult, they have more appreciation for those kind of people. They have more appreciation for other people in general compared to a, a, a kid who, like you said earlier, grown up, raised wrong. So now they look at somebody like yourself, myself, like, Oh wow! Like like we don't we shouldn't exist, and they just kind of have a hatred towards everybody in a sense, you know. But I, so that's why I think mean, the childhood is a very important role because, like you said, that's where it all begins. Yeah, you know, because once you become an adult, it all begins again, on a, on a whole nother level. Oh yeah, you know. That's Every decade is a new roller coaster. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> and me and you were still on that roller coaster. We got one more to go. We got to get old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got one more roller coaster to go. We got to get old, you know. You know, so that's a roller coaster we have not yet ride, but we eventually will ride it. Yeah. When the, when the time comes. In the meantime, I'm enjoying. I'm gonna enjoy being young. You know. You said it, bud. I can't go back and change what I did wrong, but I can enjoy where I'm going. And I can control what happens next in my life. And that's pretty much what I plan to do. But anyway, we're coming to the end of our show as usual. Yeah. It's sad. But, Fred, in closing, is there any last statement you would like to say? For any kids that watch our show, enjoy being young. Because it only happens once. You know, that's very well said. And for me, my last statement is, Enjoy it while you got it. I'm David King. I'm Fred Soberth. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. See ya.